Hello, I'm Taj, digitally known as Tropic Vibes, the host of Nifty Business, where we highlight NFTs and explore Web 3.0 as we move from pure speculation to creating real world value. It's pretty well documented that in May, Seth Green's board ape was stolen. It cost him about 165 ETH or $300,000 at that time to have it returned back to him. This is pretty much old news at this point. However, I'm bringing it up for a very specific reason. It could have been a blessing in disguise for Seth Green. So today we're going to discuss why that is and a lesson that all of us NFT holders can draw from it. So in case you don't know who Seth Green is, he really came famous from his role as Dr. Evil's son from the Austin Power series. That was the late 90s, early 2000s. And since then, he's had countless other roles, both on camera and behind the scenes. But he's currently in the news for being scammed with his board ape. There was a phishing scam. He clicked the bad link and his board ape was stolen. I'm not going to spend too much time on this because really anything of value can be stolen in any industry, whether it be jewelry, technology, a vehicle. It just happens to be the NFT being stolen at this point. But the reason why this is very important is because the IP rights that are associated with the board ape number 8398 was being used by Seth to create a show. And I'll leave a link to the OpenSea page for this particular ape so you can actually see what he looks like. But he has teary eyes because he's crying. He has a skeleton t-shirt. He has a halo over his head. He has a five o'clock shadow and he's a cigarette in his mouth. Looks like he was smoking. And it's pretty interesting character traits because that alone, I can build a character, tell all sorts of stories about this. And I'm sure that is one of the reasons why he selected this particular ape to build a show around. But it's one of the most underutilized parts of this whole NFT space is using the project clout to order to draw an audience. And the cool thing about this Bored Apes is there is no other project that draws more attention, more publicity, more press, and more community support than Bored Apes. Of course, as with anything, there's going to be your pluses, your minuses, but generally speaking, it is the gold standard. Despite whatever's going on in the news right now, a lot of projects look at them for their model and Anything that their holders do really draws attention. So Seth Green was definitely tapping into that and he was going to have the support of the community and the brand itself. But once that was stolen, all of that became very interesting because not only did you have all of that publicity that was going to be associated with Bored Apes itself, but now there is a whole storyline that could be built off of this. Basically, the ape was held hostage and was ransomed back to its original owner. I can think of an entire season that can be created from this particular storyline. And it really happened. And a lot of crazy things happen to me in life. And there's something that I'm pretty famous for ever since I was growing up in school and everything. When a ridiculous situation happens, everyone might be upset. And I'd like to break the ice by saying, hey, well, at least we have a crazy story to tell. And in this case, there is definitely a crazy story to tell. How Seth Green is going to write this in, especially after spending... $300,000 to get his eight back. I mean, he has to figure out how to recoup that. Definitely write it into the story. I don't know what the show is going to be about other than the fact that the show is going to be built around this ape. But the blessing in the skies is the amount of publicity that this definitely has gotten. There's a saying that no publicity is the only bad publicity. While the fact that his ape was stolen, he was in headlines, started a lot of controversy because he was speaking about possibly suing the person who purchased it. And it was putting his show on hold and all sorts of different things. And of course, he came under attack because bringing in lawyers and trying to sue an unsuspecting buyer was very much against the spirit of Web3. And a lot of people are saying, well, everyone wants this decentralized Wild West until they get burned. And unfortunately, he got burned. Some people are saying, well, that just means you have to change your profile picture. And they're very sarcastic with him. However, the whole positive side of all of this that I see is all the attention that this definitely got. Would you have known that Seth Green was creating a show with his bored ape if it were not for this scam? I know personally, I wouldn't have known. I spend every single day in this space reading stories, seeing what people are doing, and I did not hear about this. I knew he had an ape, but I had no clue that he was writing a show featuring the ape. So it makes me wonder as a marketing guy, how much it would have cost to get this much press coverage for his show. And honestly, I think it was worth more than the $300,000 he paid to get his ape back. It was covered by major national news outlets in the US and it was picked up by the international news. It was all over the internet. People were weighing in on it that had no interest in NFTs. Of course, some people were laughing, had their negative takes on it, but they were still talking about it. One of the huge problems with launching a new show or anything is having that initial attention. And someone who is in the podcasting, I can definitely say that is the hardest part about podcasting. Creating episodes every single day is easy in comparison to getting an audience to actually care about what I'm doing. So the fact that he drew this attention, all this publicity, and basically overnight, his ape became an A-list celebrity. 
That sort of publicity and marketing probably would have cost millions of dollars, and he didn't have to pay a penny for it. But this really goes into another category as well, the power of IP rights. I think that is one of the most undervalued areas of this NFT space. A lot of people are getting these profile pictures and not really fully capitalizing on them. A lot of people don't even necessarily even hang out with the community and get the full benefits of all the things that are going on, the events, the perks. And some people can't even travel to the live events because a lot of the times some of these live events are by far worth the price to get one of these NFTs. But that also requires you to go to where it is taking place. But one thing that every single person, no matter where you are in the world, whatever kind of travel restrictions, whether you have a visa or not, you can get into a particular country where they're holding that event. It does not matter. You can use the IP rights, especially if you have a big brand such as one of these blue chips, Lazy Lions, Bored Apes, Doodles, World of Women, and so many other amazing projects. Granted, I'm not sure if every single one of those projects that I just mentioned off the top of my head have the full IP rights that the Bored Apes allow you to have, but I know a lot of blue chips do. And the low-hanging fruit for a lot of people to use this IP, I think is probably the worst one, is merch. A lot of people are printing t-shirts and hats with their particular NFT. And personally, I would never buy that because I don't even necessarily wear branded clothing if it has Nike or a swoosh or a Jordan logo or something of that nature on it. If it's very prominent, I don't want to wear it. I know this might sound really crazy, but my whole take on it is celebrities and athletes, they're paid for those endorsements and what have you. And for me personally, I don't want to be a walking billboard for a t-shirt that I can get for a quarter of the price that is the same exact quality without that brand on the chest or whatever it might be. So when it comes to these NFT projects, unless it is my personal NFT, I don't necessarily think I would purchase someone else's NFT on a t-shirt or whatever just to be one of the cool kids. But hey, to each their own, a lot of people are doing it. But personally, I think that is probably the worst use of the IP. Now, granted, it takes a lot of talent, time, and effort to create some stories around these NFTs. But looking at their traits, their artistic properties, and the story that it tells just by looking at the image can spark a whole bunch of conversations and ideas of how shows, movies, or series can be built around these characters. And I really applaud him for actually doing that. And now that all the attention is on there, I can't wait to see what he actually builds, comes out with. But for most people who don't have the studios and Hollywood behind them, it could just be a simple thing as a social media persona. And if you're familiar with Bored Becky, who's now leading the Fame Lady Squad, she had an entire persona built around her bored ape named Becky. That is not her name, but that is the name of her ape. She had the profile and everything built. Of course, after becoming the leader of the Fame Lady Squad, she doxxed herself and so forth, and she came out by her real name, but many other people have full characters based on their NFT. And the cool thing about this is, not only is that community behind there, but there is a built-in audience for these projects already. So you put up that profile and you start to create a persona around these NFTs. It's like that whole community, you start with a base of 10,000 or whatever it might be, rather than starting from scratch. And that is the hardest thing to do. In a lot of these discords and projects, you'll see apes follow apes and lions following lions and all these different things. So when you start a persona, a character, start telling a story built around that IP, naturally it draws in the rest of the community from that project to support what you're doing. So it is a great baseline to start with. So when this ape was stolen from him, this is where it gets kind of crazy because the important thing with that is when that new purchaser bought ape number 8398, it put his entire show at jeopardy because if this person did not want to sell it back to him, that ape could no longer be in the show without written permission from the new owner or some sort of royalty deal. Because with the purchase of the NFT comes all of that intellectual property rights, which Seth Green no longer had. So it was a pretty big deal and awesome that he got it back. And again, nobody wants to pay $300,000 for something that you already owned. However, as I said, all the marketing, publicity, everything, we all know about this because of what happened. I think it was well worth it. But of course, it's easier said than done being on the outside looking in and saying, hey, that is great. I would have paid it. But Trust me, I know if it had happened to me, I would have been upset. So this is a great time to have a reminder of the importance of security. I know we have spent the last 20 years clicking links and what have you, even from our mothers and family members. But at this point in time, if you are someone who's in Web3, you have your NFTs and all these things on the same device, I highly recommend that you do not click links. I know a lot of people say this. I feel like every content creator, every space I'm in, someone says this, yet people are still getting burned every single day. And another layer of protection is to store your NFTs in a hardware wallet, whether that is Ledger, Trezor, or any of the other great manufacturers that are coming out. But those are the two big ones that have been around for the longest. They have the best reputation and the largest community that are actually using their devices. 
Of course, never sharing your seed phrase or doing anything of that nature, connecting to shady websites that you're not familiar with. And when you're getting ready to mint, it is a good idea to create a quote unquote burner wallet, meaning a secondary wallet that you can connect to unknowing sites because you don't want to have all of your valuables in one place and then you connect to mint something, especially if it is like a free fly by night operation and you put everything at jeopardy just to get a free NFT. It is just not wise. And of course, there's other steps that you could take, whether it be using a separate browser for your NFTs and, and then another one for surfing web or putting everything on a dedicated device just for your crypto wallets. But I understand not everybody has that ability and it all depends how much value of the things that you actually own. Let's say you only own $50 worth of NFTs. It's probably not worth the investment to get an entire brand new computer and hardware wallets and spend thousands of dollars on security just to protect those $50. However, if you have a $300,000 board ape, well, I think it's pretty much worth it. In short, moving from wallet to wallet does cost in gas. However, again, compared to the cost of paying $300,000 to get back a board ape, it is well worth paying a few dollars to transfer your NFT to a more secure wallet that has never been connected to anything. But hey, that is the boring side of things. That is security, but it's very important. The more fun side of things, I would love to know, do you have any ideas how people can use the IP from their NFTs in creative ways that is not just the boring merch that we're seeing everybody do? I know I'm actually working on something right now, not ready to reveal it, but if you've been watching me, you can kind of figure out an idea as to the direction that I'm going in. But feel free to shoot a line over to me at Tropic Vibes on Twitter. As usual, I want to thank you for taking the time to listen to this as we're learning and building Web3 together. Stay safe. And until next time, later. The Nifty Business Show is not investment advice. It provides insights and information within the space. As with anything, please do your own research before making a decision whether you're making an investment or a purchase.